Hey everyone, welcome back to our YouTube channel Savvy Forensics. So, in this video, we'll be learning about the sixth part of identification of bodily fluids. And here we'll be learning about the immunochromatographic assays. In bit detail, how the identification of blood is usually carried out with these tests. So, as in the previous uh, video, we have discussed about the various uh, techniques through which the identification, species identification of the particular biological fluid takes place. In this video, we are going to learn about the immunochromatographic assays in detail. So, what are immunochromatographic assays? They are basically rapid and sensitive techniques that utilize the antigen-antibody reaction for the detection of the biological fluids by giving chromatographic results or colorimetric results. These tests in the case of blood, it is carried out on the basis of identification of two particular entities of the blood. The first would be the human hemoglobin P and the second would be at the identification of human glycophorin A group. So by detecting these two entities through the process of immunochromatographic assay, we can detect the presence of blood in the particular biological fluid. So let's see how we can identify human blood with the identification of human hemoglobin protein. So, human hemoglobin protein, it is, from the name it suggests that particular protein is present only in the human hemoglobin samples. So, let's see how we can detect it. Basically, there are immunochromatographic kits that are working for the detection of human hemoglobin protein, like the hexagon opti, ABA hematray, ABA card hematrays, this is usually asked in the exams. So, uh, these two kits, they detect the presence of human blood by the identification of human hemoglobin protein. Let's see its principle. So, it works on the principle of utilization of antibody, antigen, antibody sandwich by using antibodies that recognize human hemoglobin. So, what here what happens is, it is a kind of uh, antigen antibody and reaction where a sandwich of the antibody antigen and antibody takes place if the particular uh, human hemoglobin protein in this case is present in the sample and it recognizes the human hemoglobin only and not any other protein so it is highly sensitive and rapid testing kit so this is very important diagram here usually in the sample well, this will be the sample well, and we put our sample here. Suppose the test we are we are taking the sample to be positive. We have to detect blood, and uh, we have extracted the sample. And now, so if there will be blood in the case of positivity, blood will contain hemoglobin, human hemoglobin protein. So this hemoglobin protein of the blood, we, we will mix it with the hemoglobin antibody. So this is anti-hemoglobin antibody and we are mixing it in the sample well. Now what will happen is this hemoglobin antigen or protein will bind to the antigen binding site of the anti-hemoglobin antibody to form an antigen antibody complex. And this will be the unbound anti-hemoglobin antibody. Now in the test zone there is an immobilized labeled anti hemoglobin antibody which is specific to the other epitope of the this uh, hemoglobin antigen so it will bind to it this complex will bind to this antibody and form an antibody antigen antibody sandwich in the test zone the result are positive and in the control zone these unbound anti hemoglobin antibody will bind to the anti immobilized antiglobulin. Now what are antiglobulins? These are uh, antibodies that work as antigen. So this will bind to the anti-hemoglobin antibody to give results in the control zone. Basically there are two zones, the test zone and the control zone. Test zone gives the results of the test and the control zone gives the results of the kit that if the kit is working properly or not. I hope you have understood the basic principle of the working of the human uh, 
identification of human hemoglobin protein through the immunochromatographic assay. Now, if the case is negative, these all reactions will not take place and we will get the line only in the control zone if the kit is working appropriately or properly. This is very simple. Let's understand the proper uh, experiment that is usually carried out. So we will firstly extract the samples in extraction buffer and are loaded in sample. So these extraction buffers we are uh, usually given with the kits. So we mix them or can simply extract the sample with the uh, normal saline or PBS. So in the sample well, hemoglobin in the blood sample, it is mixed with labeled anti-hemoglobin antibody. It could be labeled with an enzyme or any other tags which give um, color when given positive reaction. The hemoglobin binds to the labeled anti-hemoglobin antibody form a labeled antibody complex. Then this complex will diffuse towards the test zone. Now at the test zone, this is very important. This labeled at the test zone, the labeled antibody hemoglobin complex it binds to the immobilized anti hemoglobin antibody to form a labeled antibody antigen antibody sandwich here hemoglobin will work as an antigen and at the control zone the labeled anti hemoglobin antibody it binds to the immobilized antiglobulin and is captured this will give the result of the kit and antibody and hemoglobin represent the antibody and hemoglobin respectively. I hope now it is clear that how the functioning takes place. Let's see the results, how we get the results and how we uh, analyze them. So, this is a ABA hematrace card or the kit. This will be the sample well where we'll be putting our sample which is extracted with the extraction buffer. which can, uh, And the extraction buffer will contain a labeled anti-hemoglobin antibody. Now they will diffuse through this well further in the test zone. The labeled anti antibody hemoglobin complex it will further react with the to form an antibody hemoglobin form, antibody sandwich. If the if the result is positive, if the result is negative, it will not get a vertical line here. It will get a vertical line only in the control zone because the antibody will and it will be diffusing with the antiglobulin which is immobilized here. This will be the case of negative results and this will be the case of positive results. Now you can have a note that this in the control zone we are getting results regularly. So we'll be getting red line or the vertical line in the control zone every time. This will give the surety that the kit is working properly and the test zone will give the results of the test. As it is written here that the C band indicates the test is valid and the T band indicates the presence of human blood. Sample will be, it is labeled as similar similar case we'll be getting here also. This is another kit which is hexagon opti device. Here the control zone and test zone are giving both the positive results. So we have the sample here. And we are not having the sample. So this is very clear, I think. Now let's see the importance. So the assay is responsive to aged stains. We can work on aged stains or we can determine the presence of aged blood, stain, blood stains through this test and degraded materials. It is specific for blood of, for, of higher primates including humans. It is also responsive to seminal stains. So we can detect the presence of human seminal stains, oral, vaginal, anal and rectal swabs in very low amounts. So this is highly sensitive test and it can detect the presence of uh, hemoglobin in very low quantity. And if the concentration of blood is too high, then the false negative results can be, uh, we'll be getting the false negative results due to the high dose hook effect. Now, this high dose hook effect we'll be discussing in the next video because this term will come again. And uh, so this was all about this video. I hope that it uh, the immunochromatographic essay is very clear to you all. If you have any kind of doubt, you can ask in the comment section below. But the, in the next video, we will be discussing about the next technique of species identification by the identification of identification of human glycophorin A group. So up till, um, until then, you can just revise these techniques properly. They are very important techniques and 
or usually they are carried out in the laboratories for the identification of species i hope that you all like this video please give a thumbs up share it with your friends subscribe to this channel for more quality content thank you very much for joining us stay tuned